Welcome back. In the previous session, we have designed the login form, and right now it's time to basically implement the logic behind this form and start sending the request to the server. So we have this endpoint over here, which just takes a post request, takes a login request. You have already created this. And we always, as I've explained before, we always have two types of responses, either bad request and uh, has a message and then a success false, which is called uh, API error response for all the requests, not only for login, or we got success, which is API response, and this API response returns value, which is login response. We will call this one login response that had the token and the expiry date, and we have the message and the success. So we have already created those, but before we have just to create this object that actually represents the expiry date. So, or sorry, the login response. I will go over here and create another model here called login response, or let's call it login result, which is much better. And over here, and then let's say string token, public date time expiry date. So if we take a look at this, it's expiry date, that's right. So this is a very simple object that we are going to receive, then let's save it. That's great. Now, if you are following from the previous course or you have watched the previous one or the version one, then things are going to be totally different. Right here, it's going to be much cleaner and much easier for you. So <clears throat> this is the logic. Let me create some variables, which is, is busy to uh, show some reaction to the UI when the user is logging in. So, and we need to inject also some services like public navigation manager. And we need to inject HTTP client navigation manager. And we need to inject authentication state provider because this one we are going to call the function get state async get notification async so provider this one is responsible basically to implement the logic or to tell the application that hey the user is logged in and the last thing I should inject is the public i local storage service which is the one that I'm going to use to store the access token after the response comes back from the server. So storage like that. That's good. This is the stuff that we want to inject. Those are the variables we want to deal with. That's great. And over here, I will use a string error message string dot empty. That's good. So let's see over here. Basically, I am going to the first thing to start with the process is to set is busy to true and at the end to set it to false. And every time I click the login, let's make the error message string dot empty. Because if it has a value before, like if he clicks um, go ahead and then he shows an error message that username or password invalid. So when he click again, we want to remove that. And right now we should simply send the request. This is the object that we want to send to the server that takes its values from the form that you already bound its properties to it, as you can see over here. So what we have to do is to send the request and we can simply say var result or var response equals await HTTP client dot post async. But instead of use post async and try to take the this one and translate this one into JSON and put it in the HTTP content, we can already use the function called post as JSON async. So this function is available in system.net.http.json. So what it does is simply it's responsible. So you pass for it object as itself, and it's responsible for translating it into an application JSON content. So here we put the URL, which is API slash API slash v2.0 slash auth slash login, right? Let's make sure that this is the right one. Okay, v2 without o, okay. 
like that. This is better. Okay, good. And here we just pass our object. So this is the request. It's a bit simple. But <clears throat> here we can say response.isSuccessStatusCode or else. In case of else, as I have always said, always the response is the same. The content is API error response. So what I can type is var error result equals await response dot content. Usually we use read as a string, but now we can use read from JSON async. So it's the same. Just directly read the string and do the serial the serialization or deserialization on behalf of you. So this just reduces the amount of requests one or two lines or sorry the amount of lines from two or three lines to one line which is good so this result is api error response it's always like this so you can see that's great and because i have the error result so this one error result has a set of errors in case like there is a validations or something but we have a property called message which has the general title, like what happened, like invalid username or password or, or so on. So this is very simple. I'm going to just say error message equals error result dot message. This is very simple. This three lines of code or four lines of code are going to be used across all the requests that we are going to send, all the requests. Now, for now, I'm going to use to, to make it that simple. Once you understand how we are going to make this request and to make the request of register, I'm going to refactor this and create one endpoint that we can use to call all the APIs with just one line of code. So, but just for now, you can understand what you are doing uh, better. So, now, in case of response is success, you can see that you are going to receive an object of type API response of type login result. So, for result equals await response dot content dot read from JSON async, which is API response and login result. Because let's go make a quick recap for this one. You see, API response has a message, a success, and it has a value which is this object T. And in our case, this T is login result. And as you can see, value message is success those for API response. And this token expiry date is for the login result, which is great. So now here I have the token within this one. Let's store it in the local storage. So await, let's set item as a string async. And we have to call it the same name that we have used the same name that we have used in the authentication set provider, the same identifier. And for now, I'm not going to handle the refresh token or all this stuff, but we are going to do it later on. So I will store also the date, the expiry date, expire. That's good. So once we have the access token, right now the authentication state provider or the JWT authentication state provider, which is the implementation of this class that we have created, is actually responsible to check and if there is one which is right then it's going to populate the user object and notify the application that hey the login it has been changed and to do so what you can do is just call the authentication state provider dot get authentication state async just like that so right now our application knows about the user knows about the token because you can see over here that it checks if it's there, and right now it is there because we already set it. And uh, yeah, to bring it, fill the identity and so on, and then notify the components or about the change. So look at this, this is very simple and easy to use and understand. And the last thing is just navigate to slash, which is the home page. And this is great, right? So, if you take a look at all of this, 
Okay, I think we are just ready to go. Let me go first to log login form and if the user clicks login, so we have to disable those buttons until the request is finished. And so if is busy is true, then this button and this button is going to be disabled. So he cannot click like multiple times and send many requests at the same time, just like this. That's good. And one more thing that we have to add is to check at if or here at the end, if string that is null or white space, which is the error message. And then in this case, I'm going to show um, an alert, which is, I'm going to show this one. So let me copy the code of this. Good. Put it over here. Great. And this one, just like that error message. Print the error message. But let me add a class and use my, which is my means margin top and bottom to margin two. Okay. So th there is a space between. That's good. This is pretty simple and easy. Let's try to go ahead and check. But before doing so, let me go to index and add some code over here that detects if I'm logged in or no. So I'll add authorize view, authorize view, authorized. Just as a quick sample for now. Ah, sorry, we shouldn't use that. We'll use a link, mod link. Okay, so if I'm logged in, I will see welcome. If not, I'm going to see this one. Because later on, after we implement this, we are going to implement the functionality. So the user, if he tries to access any page and he is not logged in, automatically will be redirected to the login page. So let's see what we have. That's good. I'm not logged in. So I can see this login button here if I click on it. Interesting. Look at this. This is bad. Why this one is showing over here? So let me take another look. Oh, sorry. Here I have a little error that if not empty, show it. But if it's empty, keep it disappeared. But yeah, that's that's good. We see how it looks like and it looks good, not bad. <laughs> okay, I'll go to login. And I already have an account from the previous version, so because the version 1 and the version 2 are connected to the same database. So if you have an account or you already tested the first version, you already have access for the same stuff you do. Plannerapp.com, but I will enter an invalid credentials. Click login. Okay. And nothing happens. The reason why is because Let's go over here just to see what's happening. Okay, one more thing that I forget also is to add validation summary somewhere. Validation summary. So maybe there is an error in the validations or something. Let me go ahead and run this again. Cool, I think. Okay, the email field is required, the password is required, test. Oh, string with a maxi maximum length of six, which is wrong, actually. It should be a minimum. Okay, 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 okay. So let's go to login request. 
and oh yeah this is the reason this is the reason the maximum should be 20 but the minimum should be 6 yeah this validation summary just shows you the set of validation that going to be seen that's good let's go click login again and I will put an invalid and sending the request oh look at this this is fantastic right we have get a very clean message right now and if I click login okay the first time it takes time just to wake up uh, the, the API so now if I put an valid credentials Oh, look at this magical thing. Here we go. And I've seen him welcome. I'm logged in successfully. I have access for the user object. I have access for the ID and I have access for all the awesome stuff. I think that was pretty simple and interesting. And as I've said again, this is comparing to the previous version. This is very clear to send an object and receive the request. But also, this could be much easier. So this is what we are going to implement in the... Um, I think after the register, so once you have two or one or two requests, then you are going to make them clear. Now, the stuff that we have to implement is redirect to login if the user is not logged in already. And to implement the login display at the top bottom, at uh, the top right. And uh, to implement also the logout functionality, then we can move to register. So, until now, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.